Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this Euler's method example, where you're trying to use Euler's method to estimate a solution to a differential equation. And I'm actually going to be making a few videos uh, kind of on this topic over the next couple weeks, because obviously like most problems you can do it by hand on a piece of paper, but I also want to show you how to do it on a computer uh, using like an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets or something like that. So it'll almost be like creating our own Euler's method differential equations calculator kind of. But I want to show you how to do it by hand first and then we're going to I'm going to show you in another video how to implement that into a computer. So be sure to hit that subscribe button below, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of my new videos and then when I come out with that new video, you'll you'll be able to see that. But once I do come out with that, I'll be sure to put a little info card there at the top so you can click over there and check that out if you want to see that Euler's method differential equation calculator video that I just mentioned. So without further ado, let's jump into this problem. We're going to use Euler's method with a step size of 0.5 to compute the approximate y values y1, y2, y3, and y4 of the solution of the initial value problem y prime equals y minus 2x, where we know y of 1 equals 0. So there's kind of a lot to break down in this problem. And the reason I wanted to show you these Euler's method examples is because this is one of the formulas on my calculus 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description if you want to check that out. It's available for instant download so you can go get it right away and start using it today. But the formula for Euler's method on there is kind of complicated, uh, or it looks complicated. It's really not a complicated formula, but I want to show you how to use it so that you can kind of make sense of it because there's a lot of different, um, you know, variables and kind of weird notation in there. So basically what my calculus 2 study guide says about Euler's method is it gives you a formula where if you know the previous estimate to the solution, you can use it to get the next estimate over, basically. So let's start with that formula and then I'll explain what I mean. So this is basically what my study guide says, is that if we're given some initial value problem where we have y prime equals some function of x and y, and then we know that when x zero you know, when x is x0, y is y0. So in this case, basically we have this y minus 2x is our f of xy, and then this y of 1 equals 0 is what this y of x0 equals x0 corresponds to. So basically we know when x is 1, when x0 is 1, y0 is 0, and then this right here, y minus 2x, is going to be the function that we have based on this differential equation that we were given. So what we can do is using these two pieces of information, we can use this little formula right here and iterate through that a bunch of times, however many times we need to, to figure out the next y value. So in this case, we know we need to figure out y1, y2, y3, and y4. So we need to go figure out the four different values where basically our our y0, our given value, is from this right here. So usually the best way to do these kinds of problems is to set up a table and then we'll kind of fill in the table left to right and go down the table and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So basically we set up a table where we have a few different columns here. So the first column is going to be n, right? As we iterate through this function, uh, this formula, our n is just going to increase by one each time. So this is easy. Our n is just going to be 0, 1, 2, three, four. Then what we want to keep track of is what the current x value is. So our x sub n. We'll also keep track of what y value we're on. So y sub n. And actually, you know what we should do is make these n minus one because these are meant to be like the previous x and y value. And we're going to use them to figure out y sub n at the end. That's our end goal. Basically, we're using this formula here. And these pieces in here are essentially just meant to be kind of the pieces of this formula. So as a result, I also like to include in here this f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1. So now we can basically start with the information we were given and fill out our first row. And then we can use that row and this formula right here to keep going through that over and over to get the next piece. So like I said, we know that our first x value that we're starting with is 1, and our first y value that we're starting with is 0. That's just based on this initial problem that we were given. So basically, our first x value is going to be 1, and our first y value is going to be 0. And then what we need to do is plug in these x and y values into the f of xy, 
which is this right here, to figure out what this piece is going to be, right? So basically, plugging in x equals 1, y equals 0 into this equation is going to give us 0 minus 2 times 1. 0 minus 2 times 1, which is 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. And then our y sub n is just going to be figured out by plugging these three values into this equation here that's on my study guide. And this h is always just going to be whatever your step size is. So in this case, our step size is 0 0.5. h is going to be 0 0.5. So to figure out this y sub n here, we're going to get our previous y value, which is 0, plus h, which is 0 0.5 times the value that we got in this column right here, which is going to give us 0 plus negative 2 times 0 0.5 is negative 1, so that's just 0 minus 1, so negative 1. So then, once we have this y sub n, we can just carry this down into this next column here. That'll always be kind of the first step, is just take your previous y value, plug it into the next y value column. Then we need to figure out our next x value. To do that, all we have to do is take our previous x value and add whatever our step size is, which again, our step size is 0 0.5. So we're just gonna take our previous x value of one and add 0 0.5, giving us 1.5. Then same thing again, we're gonna take these two pieces, plug it into this function here, giving us negative one, our y is negative one, minus 2 times x, which is 1.5. So negative 1 minus 2 times 1.5. 2 times 1.5 is 3. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And then again, we're going to take these three pieces, plug it into this formula here, and that's going to give us our next y value. So that'll give us negative 1 plus h, which is always going to be the same thing. In this case, it's always going to be 0 0.5, times whatever we get when we plug 1.5 in for x and negative 1 in for y into this function that we were given. So that's going to be what we have in this column right here, which is negative 4. Negative 4 times 0 0.5 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And then we're going to just keep doing that until we get up to 4. And that's going to be the exact same process we just did for these first two rows. But again, we're going to get up to our next x value. We're going to take our previous y value and then just keep doing the same process over and over. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit since this is going to get a bit repetitive. And so you can see what the answer is going to end up being. And actually I realized I put an extra row here. We actually don't need this one because remember we just had to find y1, y2, y3, and y4. Well, since this column here represented n minus one instead of n, this is actually y1, this is y2, this is y3, and this is y4. So we've already found those four y values that are estimates to the y values of the solution of the initial value problem we were given. So those four values is going to be our answer. So like I said, this is one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description where you can learn more about that and go download yourself a copy of that today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when all my new videos come out, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.